Welcome to another edition of the Mossy Muse. Check us out at themossymuse.com and on Instagram. This evening we're going to talk about peated whiskey. We have from left to right Creek Isle, a single malt 12 year old Scotch whiskey from the Scottish Islands. We have the Big Peat, which is a blended Scottish whiskey from Isla. It actually has whiskeys from Ardbeg, Kyle Isla, Balmore, and the Port Ellen distilleries. And the last one we're going to talk about is an Ardbeg, a 10 year old single malt Scotch whiskey from Isla, obviously. The islands and Isla are known for having heavily peated scotches. Not only do they use the peat to dry out the barley and the malt, they, because of their aging process and their exposure to the sea, you're going to get a lot of saltiness, you're going to get a lot of iodine. So we're going to go through all of these. When people think of scotches, they stereotypically think of them as being overly peated, smoky. That's not always the case, in, as we've discussed in many of the other editions of this series that we've done. But today we're going to get right down to the peat of things, and we're going to start with the Craig Isle. Craig, Craig, I'm not really sure how you say it. I like that the bottlers thought to use a very dark bottle because it helps protect the spirit inside. Those of you who make beer know that light is bad for drinks. It's got a lovely amber color to it. Trying to see the legs here. Having a little bit of trouble in the light. Oh, there we go. Pretty thick legs, running pretty slowly. Let's let's nose it and see just how much peat there is in this one. It's very slight. It is not as heavily peated as one would think for an, uh, an Highland whiskey. Slightly salty, slightly smoky. And the issue with that preconception going into it is that I am not open to trying to see what else there is to know there. I'm strictly looking for the smoke, so let's take a step back, let's try it again, and see what else is there. Slight, slight floral hints, maybe a little cinnamon. Maybe a little bit of the grass and the earth that you would get out on an island like that. A lot more of the peat as you, as you taste it. Just a little sweetness as well, finishing it off. Pears, perhaps? But if you wanted to start drinking peated whiskeys, I think the Craig Isle would be a great way to start because it's not overly peated. It's not something that's going to punch you in the mouth. You're going to get that hint of smoke, but there's also some complexity and some subtlety here. It goes down smoothly. It's it's an easy drinker actually. It's something that's very approachable for a very peated for a peated whiskey. Obviously I'm enjoying it because I haven't stopped drinking it yet. Let's move along now to the big peat. You might notice, I'm gonna hold this a little bit closer to the camera, you might notice this guy's getting punched in the mouth by the peat. It's almost gimmicky and the Mossy Muse and I tend to avoid things that are kitschy or gimmicky. But we decided to give this a try and see what it was like. And I believe we rather enjoyed it. So as I said, this is a blended scotch. And as we've discussed before, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a good blend. A good blend is an homage to the art of the blender and the master distiller. This is extremely light and this kind of light as you can see from the bottle, it's very light in general, but as you can see in the glass, it's almost clear from where I'm sitting. It's almost like a white wine, the way it looks. I'm trying to see if I can find the legs, and it just in general seems to be running kind of fast, so probably less oil, probably a lighter body. Whoa! And it smells like a campfire, it smells like if you've ever been in the countryside in the fall, People burn leaves. It smells like all those smoky, smoky flavors that you get when you're having a campfire, or you're burning, or you're having a fire in your house. Fire in the fireplace in your house, not <laughs> anywhere else. Just like to point that out. So we actually have a uh, an incense sticker. Is it a candle made from peat, actual peat from Scotland? 
Okay. And it smells just like this, actually, when she burns it in my house. There have to be, there are times when I'm like, I hope she's burning that and it's not something else burning in the house. But it's a really pleasant smell, actually. Gotcha. Reminds me of fall campfires, bonfires. This tastes as peaty as you'd expect it to taste, but it's not overpoweringly peaty. It's very well balanced, actually. While the peat is a prominent factor in its flavor and its nosiness. You get a hint of sweetness, some floral notes. It's actually surprisingly well balanced. And it's simultaneously disappointing yet entertaining that they went for a marketing play like this with the very funny guy getting punched in the mouth by Pete because it's actually surprisingly good whiskey and as a blend they've come they've brought together the flavors they brought together from the four distillers that are involved balance it out really nicely so if you want more peat than an introduction but you don't want just peat the big peat is a good way to go I think I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the glass So you might have noticed that we were using slightly different glasses for this for this episode. We used them for the last episode as well. Um, we started to see these out and about, and we really like the stems on them because they make it much easier to hold. You're not going to have to worry about your body getting into the whiskey and affecting anything there. And it's easier to nose and has a shape that's similar to a brandy sniffer, so you can still get that nice bulb that's going to let the aroma float up and out, but you're also able to hold it more easily, appreciate the color, look at the legs better, and also it just, it just balances in your hand better as you're, as you're sampling the whiskey. So there are a number of reasons we got these, and that's just a few of them. That being said, I've digressed a bit, let's go to the Ardbeg 10 year old. Ardbeg is probably one of the more famous brands from Isla. It's very well known for being heavily peated. Um, this is a non shill filtered 10 year old. Let's give it a try. Again, notice the dark bottle. It's actually green, which does prevent light from getting in, but not as well as other glasses. But let's not talk about beer too much. So very light in color again. So not quite as light as the Big Pete was, but still pretty light. Legs are running a bit more slowly with this one, so it's got a bit more body than its color would, would lend you to believe. Not as heavily peated on the nose as I was expecting it to be. More floral, more balance on the nose, I think. Um, some floral flavors there. No vanilla, no maple, anything like that. Doesn't smell that sweet. The smoke is there, but it balances out with what you might think of as being some of the greenery in the environment. So maybe some of the local flora, fauna that, that's around the area. Much more heavily peated on the palate than it is on the nose. Trying to see what else I'm getting there. It's very earthy, mossy. Um, you can almost see the environment that it was distilled in. Um, getting hints of like sea salt and you know, kind of the iodine flavor that you get from you when you smell like the hard stirred ocean in cold weather. I don't know if you've ever been somewhere, somewhere north with a rocky beach like Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Ireland, Scotland, the Pacific Northwest. There's a very, very specific way the ocean smells there compared to the ocean further south and you're kind of getting a lot of those salty elements in all three of these. I'm especially getting it in the art bag. Hmm. The more I know is that the less the peat is an influence. <laughs> I got some sweeter flowery flavors there. Almost, almost marshmallowy. Um, but very, very slight, just enough for you to, to notice something a little bit different. So, don't think I didn't like the Grigal just because I left most of my sample there. All three of those, though, 
a good introduction to Pete, a nice balance, not as Petey as the marketing would have you believe, and a classic Petey balance with the hard big 10 year old. All three of these are very approachable for Petey whiskeys. I highly recommend all of them. Um, the big Pete, I'd say, is actually the biggest surprise here because it's surprisingly well balanced and very, 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 very good and not as kitschy as the label would, would, let, it, would let you to believe. So um, if you had a chance, try any of these three whiskeys. Thank you.